we don't change. They just say, maybe we'll definitely put it. Maybe nobody, I change. Stop lying. <laughs> I don't do that no more. Stop lying. <laughs> it's still in you. <laughs> like the chicken pops, it's still in you. Like the measles, it's still in you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Baby, good morning. Man, y'all know how we do it. We, 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 see, bro, we've been having the same mentality since 2020. My son said, Daddy, who the world wake up happy every morning? I said, Me, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I say, I am the Holy Spirit. I say, son, you ought to try it. <laughs> it might work for you. <laughs> Where we going? Where we going, God? Let me see. Got the tablet. Let me see how we look. Hold that, Paul. Paul, you know, I like Paul. Y'all know Paul, my dude. I mean, he be sitting by me. Hold that, Paul. Got my blue tablet. <laughs> Somebody, China, uh, 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 she did a TikTok with the blue food. <laughs> Get on your job, haters. Get on your job. Teach the people, stop lying to the people. Teach the people, stop lying to the people. Now, people, <clears throat> we're calling our blue folders, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we didn't get into the Passover, right? They got me caught up in this Pentecostal thing, right? But Passover, we're going to save the Passover for Friday, right? Now, they call it Good Friday. What was so good about it? What was so good about it? Dude, they done spit on this dude. They done beat this dude. They, what's so good about that? What well, none good about that. But, 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 If that's what y'all want to call it. Miss me with that foolishness. Well, none good about that Friday. And I ain't nowhere in the Bible. Oh, no way was good Friday. So Friday, we're going to pull out our blue folders and we're going to deal with the Passover. Now. <clears throat> Cause look like we done lost focus of that in the church. Where we going, God? <clears throat> okay, y'all, come on. How y'all feel? Y'all feeling all right? Y'all have you all something to drink? Now y'all know. God struck a nerve this week because God <laughs> done told these people about speaking in tongues, and these people done got any feelings to where they're not listening. They're not listening. They're not listening. Please, people, listen to what is said in the scriptures. Listen, listen, listen. People are so polluted. People have so... Every day, every day, <clears throat> I read. I read from the book, the Bible. I read it straight out of the Bible. But because people want to believe what they want to believe because they haven't detoxed. That's the first thing. They have to detox of all the erroneous teaching that is in them. Now watch this, people. I'm going to tell you something, right? Watch this. Y'all know I'm going to give y'all my five, right? We're going to play some chess this morning, right? My five moves, my first five openers is going to be Revelation 9, Revelation 8, Revelation 6, right? Okay. Joel, right? One, two, three, right? Okay. Deuteronomy 28, okay. Deuteronomy 28 tells us about the locusts. Joel is telling us about what Moses wrote about the disobedient, but yet y'all in church praying to get back with the locals ate. Why are you praying judgment upon yourself? Because that's what you are doing according to the ninth chapter of Revelation. The locals come for destruction, right? Okay, in the eighth chapter of Revelation, we see three woes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. According to Joel, Joel tells us about the cake, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar. The palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, right? Okay, now, it's three stages. Okay, now, watch this. Watch this, people. Peep gang. When you read the Bible, listen to what I'm saying. When you read the Bible, what are you doing? Are you interpreting it or are you translating it? When you read the Bible, are you interpreting or are you translating? I'll wait. Your bubble about to get bust this morning. I'll wait. Because watch this. In the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul said, two or three at the most, and one to interpret, right? Okay. But Paul was talking about in the church. Now, 
What you do at your house, that's your business. What you do at your house, that's your business. The Bible talking about the church. Okay, now, watch this. What's the difference between translation and interpretation? Translation and interpretation. What is the difference? Can somebody please educate Pastor Mike? I'll wait. Because watch this. If you talk to the average Bible reader, Bible reader, they're going to try to give you an interpretation of what they read. How in the world are you going to give me an interpretation about what you read when you tells me that interpretation comes from speaking in tongues? So if interpretation comes from speaking, how can you give me an interpretation about what you read? I'll wait. I'll wait. You good smart folks, I'll wait. Bible readers, please help me. How in the world are you going to tell me, well, that's my interpretation? You don't get an interpretation from what's read. You get translation. You can translate what's written. You interpret what's said. So now when you're reading the Bible, how are you going to tell me that's your interpretation? No, that's your translation of what's written. Because you translate what's written, but you interpret what is spoken. Ah, wait. <laughs> I'm away. God, I'm away. That's a good, that was a good one, God. That was a good one. Well, that's my interpretation of what? How you going to give me your interpretation of something you read? You can only give me a translation of it, not an interpretation of it. Just like the Bible been translated from Hebrew, Greek, and English, and all this other stuff. I'll wait. Well, that's my interpretation. <laughs> you don't interpret what's written you translate what is written you interpret what is spoken jesus interpret when peter said when jesus asked the question who do you say that i am some say jeremiah some say elijah some say a prophet peter said thou art the christ the son of the living god jesus translated it by saying Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. That's interpretation and, tr and translation. That, that's interpretation. You translate what's written. So now, you good church folks. They done told you, you can't do this. You can't do that. They're giving you their translation of what's written. What did the Holy Spirit say? In the ninth chapter of Revelation, God will turn the locusts loose. In the eighth chapter of Revelation, John tells us about woe, 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 the three woes. Okay. In the sixth chapter of Revelation, the sixth seal, that's the ending of the church age. That's the ending of the Holy Spirit. Joel 1, 2, and 3, Joel tells us about the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, which is the locust, right? Now, and 2, Joel tells us about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and then Joel tells us they're going to come an end of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And Joel 3, he tells us about the judgment. Okay. That he started in the first chapter telling us about the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the caterpillar. Okay. In the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, Moses tells us about blessings and curses. Now, for being disobedient, he's going to send the locusts. So why are you praying in church that God will give you back what the locusts then ate? That's the dumb, the dumbest thing in the world. 
because they've been translating what they want you to understand that they understand about the Bible. Or as they would say, this is my interpretation. How can you give me an interpretation about what's written? You don't give interpretations of what's written. You give translation of what's written. You interpret what is being said. Now, according to the Bible, <clears throat> watch this. I'm getting your feelings, getting your Bible. Come here, Paul. Where my glasses at? See my glasses, dog? I try to do it without my glasses, baby. It's somewhere, but we'll, we'll get it. According to 1 Corinthians 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? Verse 9, chapter 9, making a move. Chapter 10, making another move. Chapter 11, boom. Come chapter 12, check. Come chapter 13, check. Come chapter 14, check me. The key word in 14 chapter is church. Everybody want to hang on to the second chapter of Acts. Okay, who were present? Jews. Who did Jesus tell on the mountain to go to Jerusalem and wait for it? His apostles. So now when the spirit came, it wasn't for the believers. It was for the unbelievers. Because when the unbelievers came, the unbelievers in the second chapter, the unbelievers said, what's wrong with these people? They drunk? They tripping? Peter said, no. How could they be drinking at this hour of the day? But because people have been interpreting what's written, you have no understanding. You don't interpret. They've been giving y'all bad trans translation of what's written. Now, watch how God translate this to you. According to the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians, remember now, 1 Corinthians is the message. It's the ministry, okay? Watch this. In the ninth chapter, Paul says what? Now that I'm free, I, I use my freedom to become all things that I may win men to Christ. In other words, in other words, let me translate that for you. If you see me in the club, if you see me at the second line, if you see me with the Indians, because as Paul would say, I became a Jew to win the Jews. I became one that followed the law to win the ones that followed the law. I became all things that I may win men to Christ. But, but you good church folks, y'all so phony, y'all think it's all about y'all. Who are you winning to Christ? You standing in that building. They got you thinking you can't even live your life. And they've been playing y'all. Can I read this Bible? I'm going to read it. Can I read this Bible? Watch this. According to the book. Well, you can't go here. Show it to me in the Bible. Show it to me. Well, well the Bible says you can't serve two masters. That was talking about money. <laughs> he was talking about money. I'm not running out there for no money. I'm going to tell you about God. Okay. Well, that's a stumbling block. No, it's not. Because a stumbling block is to cause another brother to sin. All of them brothers I ran out there Sunday and sisters I ran into Sunday. Pastor Mike, thank you, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're helping me. How does a stumbling block? Do you know what a stumbling block is? Watch this. I'm going to read it for you. According to the ninth chapter, Paul says, I'll start at verse 19. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9 and 19 says, For though I be free, from all men let me break that translate that for you i'm baptist i'm full gospel i'm culture right because that man told me if i come up under their organization if i need any bills paid if anything go wrong they gonna help me that's why i'm in this organization now watch this i'm gonna stand up every sunday and tell y'all trust god and believe in god but yet I'm Koji, yet I'm full gospel, yet I'm Baptist. Make it make sense. Because if I'm trust, if I'm gonna tell you to trust God, I'm not trusting God. Because if I have any problems, 
All I got to do is go to the organization. They're going to help me. Make it make sense. See how phony we are? See how phony we are? I'm not letting nobody play y'all like that. If I'm going to trust God, I'm going to trust God. If God want me to have a big building, he going to give it to me. If God want them bills paid, he going to pay them. I cast all cares upon him. But I look like filing some man. And that's why they're not free. Because that's why they got to beg you for money. Because they got to pay the organization. That's why they got to beg you for money. Because they got to make sure they keep their standards. I don't give a damn. I'm going to sit right here on my stool and teach this book. Whether you do it or not. Because I'm free. Now watch this. For though I be free from all men. What I look like? Israelite. But you got you to do this to have fringes. To hell with some fringes. I need God. I don't need that foolishness. I, I'm not about to do nothing to help another man put some money in his pocket. I'm not about to play you like that. For what? What I look like? Say, man, I'm from the streets. I'm going to keep it street. Watch this. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself a servant unto all. That's why I sit here every day. Ain't no problem with it. And guess what? None of them can't open their mouth. Not man one of them. I ain't finished. Watch this. I made myself a servant to all that I might gain the more. That I may win. Win. W-I-N. Win. That I may win the more. Verse 20. 1 Corinthians 9 and 20 says, And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might win the Jews to them that are under the law. Under the law, that I might win them that are under the law. To them that are without law. As law, being not with law, without law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win them that are without law. Man, the man, you shouldn't have been out there dancing. Show it to me in the Bible. Show it to me in the Bible. You can't. Y'all just be running your mouth. Oh, that's your interpretation, my bad. My bad. That's your interpretation. Translating it says something different. Paul said, I became all, all things to men that I might win men. If I won't go in the club, I'm gone. Why? Say, bro, that the man find me watching. Why? Because them Jews ain't about to be phony like you church folks. Say, bro, I be watching, man. I appreciate it, bro. You really helping me. Now what? Run into a sister. Brother the man, I watch. Brother the man, can I take, I take a selfie, babe? We take selfies. We enjoying ourselves. Y'all can't even enjoy yourself because y'all not free. Y'all in bondage. You all are in denominational bondage. They, pastor got to listen to them, them, who's sitting on the board. He got to do what they say, and y'all got to do what pastor say. What the hell I look like? Please tell me. Please tell me. God, did you tell me? Listen to them. No, you say what? Listen to you. You, right? Bible, babe. Before you open your mouth, you better know that Bible. You open your mouth. Don't open your mouth. Watch this. Verse 22, verse 22, to the weak, 1 Corinthians 9 and 22, to the weak, to the weak, I as weak, that I might win the weak, I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some, y'all can't save nobody because y'all too busy want to judge everybody, judge yourself. Judge not that you be not judged. It's not that what the scripture says. Because according to what he said in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, he said, he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he judges no man. I cannot judge you per se. But spiritually speaking, I'm going to knock fire. I'm going to knock fire out you. Come here, Paul. Come here, Bible. Come here, Bible. Come here, Bible. According to the Bible. <laughs> I love this here. I love this here. According to the Bible, watch this, you good church folks. Your interpretation, no, translate this thing, watch this. According to 
second Galatians. Galatians, according to Galatians, second chapter, verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to blame. What you said, Paul? Mine. When Peter came to Antioch, I told that joke in his face. I said, boy, you phony, boy. I said, boy, you dirty, boy. I said, boy, you low down. Paul, you told that to Peter? Read it. Read it. Watch this. Galatians 2 and 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to blame, to be blamed, to be blamed, to be blamed. So I don't know where y'all get that old fake stuff. Don't put your mouth on the man of God. Peter checked that Negro. Peter checked him. I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 12. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. What happened, Paul? Mike, this dude's so phony, bro. Now, before James and John them came, said, bro, he was sitting over there with them dudes, doing this and that with them dudes, right? Then here come James and John them, and he gonna tell them dudes they shouldn't be doing that. But before James and John came, he was doing that with them dudes. I ain't finished, watch this. Far before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, James and John, uh, James and John, he withdrew and separated himself, Peter phoned himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision, Peter, James, and the rest of them, verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. No, uh, Paul, yeah, Mike, they thought of doing the same thing. Watch this. Insomuch that Barnabas, also was carried away with their dissimulation. What you mean, Paul, Mike, bro? They heard Barnabas' feelings. Wow, what happened? Because Bar Barnabas seen how fake they was. Just like your past. I ain't finished, watch this. Verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation hypocrisy hypocrisy but when i saw that they walk not upright according to the truth of the gospel according to the truth of the gospel say how are you gonna tell me something you don't even know the truth of the gospel you jibby jibby jabbing you jibby jibby jabbing i ain't finished watch this is you on paul okay but when I saw that they walked not upright according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all. Say, bro, you check Peter in front of all the people? Yeah, I checked him. Oh, you know you're not supposed to put your mouth on a man. Man, miss me with that fool in the mic. What is that in the Bible? So you mean, Mike, I checked him. Wow, Paul. I love you. You gangster, Paul. <laughs> Y'all cold and fake. But when I saw that they walked not upright according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, live it after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews do? You go, I'm gonna stand in the pulpit and tell you trust God. But I'm in this organization. So if the money ain't right, the organization go step up and help me out. But I'm going to stand in the pulpit and tell you trust God. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. If I'm going to trust God, what I need them for? If I'm going to trust God, what do I need to be in any organization for? I'm not trusting God. I'm trusting the organization. That's why they play you. That's why they pimp you. That's why they handle you like they do. And you fall for it. At driving the net, we ain't rolling with nobody but God. To hell with the organization. God got us. Paul said, I became all things that I may win men to Christ. 
So if I won't go to the second line, I'm going. And I'm going to talk about the Lord. And when we out there, when we talk about people, we talk about the Lord. I'm out there, I'm giving out blue folders. What y'all giving these people? Nothing. Y'all trying to give them an interpretation of something that's written. You cannot interpret to me what's written. You translate what's written. You interpret what's spoken. And I ain't finished. Watch this. Come back here, Corinth. But Paul, um, go on, Mike. Hold that. All right. Go on to the Bible. <clears throat> In the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I'll start at verse 7. No, go to 6. 6. Okay. 1 Corinthians 10 and 6 says, Now these things were our example. To intent we should not lust after the evil things as also they also lust. Neither be ye idolaters. Neither be ye idolaters. Koji, idolatry. Full gospel, idolatry. Come here, blue folder. Come here, blue folder. According to the blue folder, Paul finds Paul's final commitment on the works of the flesh is stern and forceful. Any so-called Christian, any so-called Christian will engage in these types of activities, shut themselves out of the kingdom of God. That is, they do not possess eternal salvation. Where we at, girl? You know I got my glasses. Temperance, meekness, goodness. Where we at? There we go, we're on the wrong side. Get your glasses, boy. Hatred. Witchcraft, idolatry. According to the fifth chapter of what? Galatians. But yeah, y'all want to talk about the fruits of the spirit. Okay, bag it up. Look at the 19 things that exist before they tell us about the fruit of the spirit. But y'all want to run to the fruit of the spirit. Well, let's bag it up some more. Because according to what Paul says in the 18th verse, Paul is letting us know to be led by the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit. Paul said, but do it in love. You church folks don't do it in love, but y'all won't speak in tongues. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke, I understood. Now I'm a man, I'm going to put away that childish foolishness. Where you love that? Oh, shouldn't it be yet? Shut up. You're making a bunch of noise. Paul said, keep that foolishness together in the church what you do at your house that's your business you don't care what you do at your house he said church <clears throat> well we had idolatry worship of spirits worship of spirits persons 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 are graven images also trust in any person, also trust in any person, institution, institution, I'm Baptist, I'm full gospel, I'm Kojic, you idolatry, work of the flesh, I'll wait. You ain't got your food that's coming. We ain't believe that. A lot of y'all call me, send me a message yesterday. But I look like sitting up under them fake jokes. Hey, phone. Back to Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians 10. Keep in mind now, watch, watch the translation. Not an interpretation, translation. We're learning how to read the Bible. We don't do interpretation. Interpretation comes from what's being spoken. Translation come from what's written. Gotta go back to Corinthians. 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 Gotta go back to Corinthians.
go slow. First Corinthians 10 and 6. Now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as also they also lust. Neither be ye idolaters, idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. First Corinthians 10 and 11 says, now, you know how y'all like to say now faith. See, you gotta have now faith. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Verse 11, that just was Paul's way of writing when he was dealing with something specific. He said now, verse 11, now all these things happen unto them for example. What you mean, Paul? But Mike, when Moses recorded all of the stuff with the children of Israel in the wilderness, he kept us in, he, he, he had us in mind. He knew how we would be. So all the stuff that they went through and experienced, that's an example. That's an example that we shouldn't get caught up in. Why, Paul? Keep reading. Watch this. Now all these things happen to them for an example as they are written for our for our instructions upon whom the end of the world are come so what was written what moses wrote was for an example was really instructions for us for the end age which is the ending of time where we at right now right paul that's why in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, Moses tells us about the locusts because of the disobedience. This is why Joel write about the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the locusts and the caterpillar because it was judgment. But you in the church praying, God, give me back with the locusts and eight. That's the dumbest thing in the world. You are praying judgment upon yourself. Pastor ain't tell you that? Pastor ain't tell you that? What did, wait, no, my, my bad, I'm sorry. You know how y'all gotta go through the deacon first? The deacon ain't tell you that? The deacon ain't tell you that? He the one be praying. Oh, brother, in the name of Jesus. Please bless us and give us back with the canker worm and the palmer worm and ate it up, Lord. Give it back to us right now, God. For your word said, Lord Jesus, let the weak say I'm strong. What the world is he praying? Run. What you read, Joel, one time and you just want to use it in prayer? Man, that's judgment. You ain't read the eight chapter of Revelation? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, you didn't read the ninth chapter of Revelation? The locusts are coming. The locusts are coming. But Moses told him that in Deuteronomy. Now, Joel, minor prophet, is breaking down how it's going to happen. It's going to start out as a palmer worm. From the palmer worm, we're going to go to the canker. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My bad. They was interpreting with, with, with the. Well, that's my interpretation. Did anybody say something? Did anybody say anything? Nobody ain't saying nothing? What, what you mean that's your interpretation? Anybody say nothing? Paul says in the 14th chapter of Corinthians. Paul says, how is it 
Then brethren, when you come together, every one of you have a song, have a doctrine, have tongues, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most three. And that be by course, let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. You do what you want at your house. That's between you and God at your house. Let him keep silent in the church. Well, speaking in tongues is a spiritual gift. I know that's what's in the 12th chapter. But what that got to do with what Paul said right here? Where's the sign? A sign for who? A sign for who? But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to go. Verse 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But proper signs serve it not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. But give me some um, translation of that, Paul. Mike. Prophecy, an unbeliever is not going to get prophecy. It's not even for them. Prophecy is for the believer. This is what, all prophecy is proclaiming the word. So that's why in the 14th division of Psalm, a fool was saying his heart, there's no God. Yeah, man. Wow, 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 Paul. You make it so easy seeing you're talking to you, man. So, Paul, in verse 23, you says, if the whole church, if the whole church, not what you're doing at home, not 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 tongues is no spiritual gift, not what's in second, not in second, no, 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 no. Keyword, church, 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 church. If the if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues. And there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say, you're mad? What's wrong with you? As Paul continued to write, because there's no interpreter, because there's no interpreter. So now I done came to church with you. Y'all done cut a fool. Y'all done made all that noise. And now you're going to invite, well, are you going to come back to church with me next Sunday? No. Why? I ain't going to hear all that noise. I'll be mad all that noise. I don't know what the people are doing. Paul said, I became all things that I may win men to Christ. You're trying to play holy and you're running people. I'll wait. I'll wait while you're around here faking. Because they, especially when them full gospel people came around, that one dude taught them to think they better than everybody. So now y'all put bishops way up here. Them Negroes ain't nobody. They don't know nothing. Let's walk this book. I guarantee you. They're going to try to give you the interpretation. How you going to interpret to me what's written? Translated. From Revelation to Genesis. Translated. So now, make you feel like you ain't nobody. Make you feel like you're guilty. Following this Negro? Who is he? Who is he? He ain't God. But you made him God. And now you won't go beg God. No. Go to the God you mean. You made him God. And he ain't gonna do nothing for you. But he gonna take everything from you. Y'all built them gods. Remember in the Bible? When Moses went in the mountain, when Moses went in the mountain, and Aaron was still there with the people, and the people said, man, man, let's, we need, where that dude Moses went? Man, we're going to build our own God. And they built them 
a goal. And they built them a goal. Go back to the fifth chapter of Galatians. Go back to your blue folder. Idolatry, hatred, all of that. Works of the flesh. Can't say nothing because they don't know enough. He a bishop. The Bible said a bishop should be apt to teach. But teach me. I'll wait. Teach me. Why? Because Proverbs 12 and 1 says, if any man don't like correction, he's stupid. Paul says in Corinthians, everything must be done decent and in order. But Paul also said, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Paul, you say in Romans that let every man be a liar, but the word of God be the truth. You also say that if any man think he knows, he knows nothing, yet as he ought to know it. I love what you say when you say, though I may be rude in speech, I'm not in knowledge. Bible. Bible. In the 11th chapter of Corinthians, I'll start at verse 17. Now in this, 1 Corinthians 11, 17, now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, I praise you not, that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. I'll get the Hebrews. Well, the Bible said for saying not the assembly. Read the verses before that. Read the verses before that. We'll get there one day. Right here, we right here. 1 Corinthians 11 and 17. Now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not. That you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, in the church, I hear that there be division among you. I partly believe it. It clicks in the church. Y'all know y'all got clicks in the church. Bible, baby. If God give it to me to say, I'm going to show it to you. Bible. I ain't finished much this. Verse 19. For there must be also hearsays among you. What? What, Paul? That they which are approved, approved, may be made manifested among you. Translation of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 11 and 20. Self deception. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Paul telling them about themselves, how phony they were, because they was caught up in self, self deception, like a lot of you church folks are today. I ain't finished watching this. Verse twenty one. For in eating, just dealing with communion, we had communion Sunday. You know, I didn't put that, y'all, you, you know, like I told y'all, when I was at the church, I was a minister. So you got to line up and the deacons go come with a pitcher of water. You got to hold your hand over the bowl and you got to wash your hands. And then we're going to stand on the side of the table. We're going to raise up the white sheet. And I'm like, God, what is this about? He said, Mike, back during the times of slavery, wasn't no air conditions in the church, Mike. So they kept the windows open. So as the windows was open, the flies came in and the flies would get in the communion. So to keep the flies out of the communion, they just covered it with a sheet. They just covered it with a sheet. I ain't finished my this. For in eating, everyone take it before others, his own supper, his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunk, indulging. So Paul say, what the world are y'all doing? What the world are y'all doing? This is what y'all to make communion about? What about those people that's hungry? They don't have nothing to eat. What y'all brought that here for? We supposed to be doing communion. Nobody is better than nobody. But y'all too busy with self-deception. 
Y'all too busy with indulging in what y'all want to do. I finished. Watch this. Verse 22. What? Paul say what? What the world are y'all doing? Translation in today's time by Pastor Mike. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise you the church of God? And shame them that have not? That's what y'all do. That's what you good church folks do. Y'all make them people feel like nothing. Because y'all think y'all got everything. And yet, if I go back in Galatians, Peter and John and James told Paul, say, bro, make sure you take care of the poor. Oh, let me read it. Let me read it. Oh, come here, come here, Galatians. I'll be back, Corinth. I'll be back. Come here, Galatians. Just in case. Oh, he be talking. No, he be reading. According to the Bible, Galatians, I'll start at the eight verse. For he that worketh effectual and Peter to the apostleship of circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Paul, this is what you're saying about Peter, right? Okay, Paul, I love how you write, Paul. Paul, verse 9, Galatians 9. Galatians 2 and 9. And when James, Peter, and John, who seemed to be the pillar, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. Y'all y'all seen him? Oh. Y'all come up and get the right hand. For what? What? What I said in the Bible. You don't have nothing to do with them people. I ain't finished. Watch this. Perceive the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go unto the heathens and they unto the circumcision. Only, verse 10, Galatians 2 and 10, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also went forward to do. Mike, I was going to make sure the poor was all right, Mike. That's why I ain't big them, Mike. That's why I ain't pimp them. That's why I ain't play them, Mike. I had to make sure they got the word. I had to make sure they was all right. Mike, I went to a bunch of heathen people, Mike, who they know nothing about no God. Well, Paul, you can't serve two masters. But yet, God will send you to the heathens. But yet, the, the heathens hang at the club. The heathens over there on the corner. The heathens over there. The heathens at the second line. But yet, you can't go. I'll wait. I'll wait. Back to Corinthians. You got the right one. You run up on Father Mike, you better be ready. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Verse 22. 1 Corinthians 11 and 22. What? You have, you have not houses to eat and drink in, right? Or despise you the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Should I praise you in this? I praise you not. I praise you not. You've been phony. I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 22, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. Paul, tomorrow, we're going to deal with that, Paul, because tomorrow was that Thursday, right? That's, when, that's what you're talking about, right? The Last Supper, right? On that Wednesday, that's when he was anointed by Mary with the alabaster earl, right? Okay. I just want to stay in sequence of what happened, you know, because come Friday, these church folks are going to get together and talk about the last seven sayings. No, don't give me no last seven sayings. Start with them last seven days. Why? Because I need to know what happened to him Sunday. Sunday he rode in on the donkey. Because when I read in the, in the 19th chapter of Revelation, now he's coming on a white horse. Okay, cool. Come Monday he was hungry. He was hungry. So he ran up on the tree. The tree wasn't bearing fruit. So he cursed the tree. But if I say hell, they say I'm cursing. No, I'm not cursing. You made that a bad word because it's in the Bible. So what the hell are you talking about? You don't know. Okay, it's okay. 
So Monday he rides in on, on Sunday he rides in on the donkey. Okay. Then Monday he come and he cursed the tree. Okay. Now the tree cursed, right? Come the next day, boom. Come Tuesday. Now he gonna let it boom. Say, say Jesus, what's happening with that tree? Say, bro, don't worry about that tree. That tree should have been bearing fruit. It didn't. So I cursed it. So I cursed it. Okay. So we know Tuesday, he goes into the church. He flip over the table. Boom. Why you do that, Jesus? Mike. Say, bro. It was a holiday coming up, Mike. So they know all these people was going to come from all over the world to Jerusalem. So now they laying there. They done up the price. You know how y'all do that today? As soon as the event take place in the city, you up the price. <laughs> so now a plate that would be regular $10, now the plate $30. A, a regular Uber ride that would be $10, now it's $30. A regular rental car that would be $100, now it's $300. So now I go in the church, I go in the place, Mike. I already know they run a game on the people. I know they done up the prices, right? So Mike, look how they play. Look how cold the game is. What happened, Jesus? Say, bro, they knew the only money that could be spent in that town was by the king in that town. So if you came from somewhere else with some other money, you had to get that money and you had to switch that money over for the money to be spent in this town because you couldn't use that money. So they up that price. Mike, go back in the Old Testament, Mike. The dove had a price. The pigeon had a price. Everything had a price, Mike. This, but they upped the price. So I'm, I'm tripping like, man, Get that foolishness out in here. But nobody never really break this stuff down to us. Jesus got mad and turned over the tables. He turned the tables over because they was being phony. He turned the tables over because they was beating the people. Ah, wait. Ah, wait. Come that way, is it? Today? Here come Mary. Who running his mouth? Now you want some interpretation? You want some interpretation? Judas. Who was Judas? Judas was the bishop. Judas was the bishop. Just like the day they run behind money. Judas say, hold up, Jesus, bro. What you doing? Why would that lady waste? Why would she waste that type of oil, that type of perfume on you, bro? I could have sold that and made some money. I could have sold that and made some money. Jesus said, hold up, bro. She doing this for my burial, bro. Come on, Judas, bro. I already know you ain't no good. But Jesus knew about Judas. People be talking about watch Judas. No, I ain't watching Judas. I know he ain't no good. I'ma watch Thomas. Because Thomas is the one going through the crosses. I'ma watch the doubt in Thomas. Because Thomas is gonna be the one that's gonna be in the background. Man, you believe that foolishness? Man, you believe what he said? Man, I don't believe that. Man, I don't believe that. Shoot none but crosses. And guess what? Doubt in Thomas will always cause more problems than any Judas because you know what Judas gonna do. But you don't know what that down Thomas gonna say. So now here we are. Paul is reminding them of what happened. So Paul says, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After that, verse 25, same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this is the New Testament in my blood. Do this. You as of you drank it in remembrance of me. Say, Paul. Hold up, Paul. I ain't gonna run through that, Paul. What did you just say? Mike, this cup is the New Testament. Oh, 
bro. Say that again. I know Jesus said that. But you setting it up. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. I go to the Old Testament about my historical data. I come through the five books of law. I come through the 12 books of history. I come through the five books of poetry. I come through the five books of major prophecy. And then I come through 12 books of minor prophets. So in my historical data, Jeremiah, you sing a new covenant. But Paul, you saying a new testament. Well, let's go to the New Testament. In the New Testament, I gotta go with my theological significance. So when I deal with my theological significance, oh the way. Old Testament. Is prophecy and the New Testament is fulfillment. What well, Jesus said, this is the New Testament in my blood. That's why, Paul, you always taught about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Paul, in my historical data, God killed animals. Blood was shed in the garden to cover Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve tried to use leaves, but that wasn't good enough. So God shed blood in the garden to cover Adam and Eve. Paul, let me read a little more, man. This, this thing got deep here, Paul. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as off as you drank it in remembrance of me. Watch this. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Verse 27, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, 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 unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But that bishop, don't get along with that bishop. Unworthily. That pastor don't like that pastor. Unworthily. But yet, I'm going to stand by the table and I'm going to pray. Unworthily. And have you to believe this table is holy when I'm unworthily. Watch this. I believe it. Bible. We ain't gonna never teach y'all like that because y'all gonna peep game. Peep game. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. So how you gonna tell me about where I'm going and what I'm doing and how I'm doing it? The Bible said, let a man examine himself. If you want smoke, smoke. If you want drink, drink. That's between you and God. Examine yourself. But church folks put themselves in the place of God. Oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. That's between you and God. Why? Because I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not to my own understanding. I acknowledge him 
in all my ways. And he directs my path. And that's why I stay out your way. I ain't finished. Watch this. <clears throat> Verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat and drink unworthily, unworthily eat and drink damnation to himself. Judgment to himself. Judgment to himself. Watch this. For he that eat and drink unworthily eat and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many they have to tell you that. <laughs> but he won't tell you the table holy. <laughs> Man, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Jeremiah, can I go to one of your um books? I want to go to um. Can I can I use Lamentation? Yeah, okay. You wrote Lamentations, right? Okay. Let me go to Lamentations. I'll be back, Paul. According to Lamentations. And I will start at verse 38. Lamentations 3 and 38. Out of the mouth of most of the high. Out of the mouth of the most high. Out of the mouth of the most high. Do you know the book of Lamentations? Okay. Out of the mouth of the most high proceed not evil and good. Proceed not evil and good wherefore do a living man complain a man for the punishment of his sins <clears throat> verse 40 lamentation 3 and 40 let us search and try our ways and turn again to the lord let us lift up our hearts with our hands unto God in the heavens. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not per and thou hast not pardoned. I'm gonna keep reading. I will bet. I said it and I stand on it. Y'all been so phony in these churches. And I'm talking about your leaders. Because they teaching you to be phony. That's why James says, greater condemnation on those who wants to be teachers. But watch this. Watch where James go. Come here, Blue Book. Come here, Blue Book. Come here, Blue Book. Come here. Come here. Come here, James. Well, yeah, James. According to what you have in your folder, Paul first journey, Paul second journey, Paul third journey. After Paul write Galatians, here go James. After Paul write Galatians, here go James' letter. James' letter is before Corinthians. James' letter is before Romans. James' letter is before Ephesians. James' letter is before Colossians. James. James says, greater condemnation on those who wants to be teachers. Watch this. Come here, James. Come here, James. Come here, James. At James say, okay, where James go at? That's the Bible in chronological order, according to James. Come here, James. Come here, James. According to James 3 and 1, my brethren, be not many teachers, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnation. Who? Teachers. I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, 
the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. But yet we're going to stand in pulpit and tell y'all, watch your mouth. No, pastor, watch your mouth. Watch your tongue. Bridle your tongue. You doing the teaching, not the people. Watch this. Verse 3, James 3 and 3. Behold, we put bits in them horses' mouth that we may that he may obey us, and we turn about the whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven in the fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whatsoever the governor listed. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter of a little fire kindled. But yet we're going to tell y'all, watch your tongue. No, pastor, watch your tongue. James is talking to you. He's not talking to the people. He say greater condemnation on those who wants to be teachers. So we make y'all believe that's about you all. So you watching what you say. And all the while you saying the wrong thing because we taught you to say it. Oh, wait. Oh, whoa. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they can't open the mouth. See how phony we done made y'all to be? I ain't went to Paul. I go to Paul. Paul say, Timothy, watch him. Watch him. In the last days, they going to be lovers of themselves. What do you mean, Paul, lovers of themselves? My God, they gonna care about themselves. You see what the man did, huh? How you just gonna blow somebody up? How you gonna do? Because he just loved himself. He don't care about nobody else. He had to love himself. Because if he didn't love himself, he would go to God and ask God for a better understanding, like Solomon did. God, give me the wisdom and the knowledge to lead your people. Not pimp them, not play them, Go in the 10th chapter of what? John, Jesus telling what? Say, bro, see them Pharisees? Watch them. Who was the Pharisees? Leaders. Leaders. He said, my sheep know my voice. Strangers won't answer. You're going to have a lot of leaders go come and try to lead the sheep. Some of them are going to just get paid. Jesus said, those are called hirelings. They are hired. They are hired to lead the sheep. I but yet, we're going to stand in the pulpit and tell you, well, the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. Who was he talking to? Was he saying that to you? Or he was letting the leaders know that? Bible, baby. Stop. How to read the Bible. How to read the Bible. How to read the Bible. All you all got to do is go to the first verse. He says, see them Pharisees? They're trying to get in the sheepfold, but they got to come through me. They got to come through me. Some going to try to climb over the gate. Some going to try to come through the back way. No, they got to come through me. And if they come any other way than me, they are robbers and thieves. Jesus said, anybody that came before me is a robber and a thief. So now if I'm standing in a pulpit and I haven't gone through Jesus, I'm a robber and a thief, calling it the 10th chapter of John. People. In your blue folders. <clears throat> you have a timeline of the Bible. You have Noah, Abraham, Job, Jacob. No, Job was before Jacob. But church folks going to tell you to have faith like Jacob. I mean, like Job. Have patience like Job. I don't want faith like Job. I want my own faith. I don't want patience like Job. I want my own patience. Job was before Jacob. But in the Bible, before you get to Job, you got to go through five books of law. Then you're going to go through 12 books of history. After the 12 books of history, after Esther comes Job. 
when Job was before Esther, Job was before Nehemiah, Job was before Ezra, Job was before all the kings, Job was before Samuel, Job was before Joshua, Job was before Moses, Job was before Jacob. The Bible and its proper chronological order. When we study this, we're going to learn what these books was about and who the books were written to. It wasn't written to you. Back to what? The 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. As an example. As an example. As an example. No. You're not going to do what they did. Why? Because God was dealing with the mental side of a person. Because they didn't have the spirit dwelling in them. Because come later, Joel says that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So they didn't have the spirit of God dwelling in them. So God was dealing with the mentality of these individuals in the Old Testament. So now, Jesus said, this is my body, the New Testament. The blood is the New Testament. Okay. Now, come Friday, go to jail, get hung on the cross, Saturday go down in hell, Sunday you rose. Okay. After you rose, you told them go back to Jerusalem and wait for it. It's going to come. John surely baptized you with the water. John surely baptized y'all with water baptism. But y'all going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came in and filled the room. Just like when I used to go as a minister, I had to put water in the pool pit, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the baptism pool, fill it up, put the person in the water, then baptize them. So the Spirit came in filled the room and then filled the 120 people that was in the room they were baptized in the Holy Spirit now they spoke in tongues they spoke in tongues Paul tells us the sign of them speaking in tongues in the church pay close to pay close to the difference Jesus said you will be a witness. God told Paul you're going to suffer many things. When you go in the 15th chapter of Acts, that's your first conference. That's a conference. They are holding a conference about a lot of stuff that was being saved in different parts of the world. So when they met up, they came together. Well, you know, we say this, we say that, we heard this, we had that. Not like these jokers play y'all today. Y'all spend all that money to come to a conference and still don't know nothing. According to the New Testament of the blood. Motivation. <laughs> Get on your job. Get on your job. <laughs> Motivation. <laughs> Get on your job. <laughs> I ain't been to nobody Bible college. I ain't been to nobody seminary. For what? <laughs> and we'll walk you with this Bible. We'll walk you with this Bible. You know how to play church. Paul had to start the church. It's a difference. You want to and you want to interpret the Bible. No, translate it. <laughs> Interpretation come from what's being spoken. <laughs> Translation come from what's written. <laughs> and you want me to follow that foolishness? Pastor Mike know that. So at the Super Sunday, I'm running into all these brothers. Say, Pastor Mike, man, we love you, man. We appreciate you, bro. Say, man, Pastor Mike, you're a hundred. You know why? Because I'm not judging them. I'm not better than them. I'm out there with them. Not serving no another master. To be a stumbling block is to cause another brother to sin. Brother already caught up in stuff. I'm just letting him know. Say, bro, you want to talk? I'm here. 
You want to discuss something? I'm here. But y'all done been so phony in the church. You can't go here. You can't go there. Jesus said, I came to save that which is lost. For the Bible said he loved 99 righteous to go get that one. To go get that one. If you don't know that Bible, detox. Then holler at me. Don't come running your mouth. <laughs> don't come running your mouth. Because guess what? Father Mike don't have no breaks. I don't know what breaks is. I'm going to give it to you real, raw, and uncut. I don't bite my tongue and I talk back. So if you say something to me, I'm going to say something back to you. Why? Because I know you don't know what you're talking about. I will be. What I look like? What I look like? Go. My confidence is in you. Paul, oh, you said in the 10th chapter of Hebrews, don't lose that confidence. So, okay. One thing for sure, two things for sure. God said, Mike. Use what I gave you, what you gave me, God. Remember I told you, eat the book? Okay. When I was in that prison and God called me, I said, God, I ain't writing none of this stuff down. You called me? I ain't, what I need? I'm going to write down what you tell me to tell the people. But as I'm writing it down, it got to sound good to me. As I'm writing it down, it got to make sense to me. But yet you told me to tell it to the people. And every time I'm writing it down, I got to ball it up and throw it away and start over. I got to ball it up, start up. But you told me to tell it to the people. If you told me to tell it to them, okay, well, that's where we going, go. You told me to tell it to them, okay. Where you, where you want to go? You want to go Old Testament, New Testament? Where you want to go? Turn, turn your face, wherever you want to go. And it's going to all line up. Because that's what he said. But I need to write something now for. And then and then I'm gonna write down a message so pastor could read it before I preach it. But yet this is what God told me to tell the people. If this is what God told me to tell the people, what you need to read it for, Pastor? See how phony y'all are in the church? Lord have mercy. Brother told me some years ago, and he seen I was, he said, say, man, you know, you could come up under us, man. My people coming in, you know, and uh, we could do a ceremony and make you a bishop. I'm already a bishop. I'm already an apostle. I'm already an evangelist. I'm already a teacher. I'm already a pastor. Paul was all of that. Paul was all of that. What I need to give you some money for to make me a bishop? And I know way more than you, but you're going to make me a bishop. Make it make sense, bishop. Miss me with that church foolishness. We at the end, baby. These people need to know the truth. So all you Negroes that get in y'all feelings because y'all don't like the truth, go over there with that, bro. Don't come over here. <laughs> I tell you, like, I'm going to tell you like I told them jokers in the joint. Say, bro. Me? I don't care about your feelings. I care about your soul, baby. And ask them brothers who was locked up with me. I would tell them that in a minute. Say, bro, I don't care nothing about your feelings. Ain't no man got no business walking around prison and his feelings anyway. I don't care nothing about your feelings. I care about your soul, baby. I care about your soul. Your feelings gonna send you to hell. Oh, I could use hell right there? I could use hell right there, right? Okay. I used it in the right context, right context, right? I ain't said nothing wrong, right? I want y'all to cut me off. You know how y'all get? Oh, he was cursing. It's sad how these people done played y'all. Better yet, it's sad how them people done played us. So I was, I was, I was like, I go to all these different services, right? Oh, you got to be baptized in Jesus' name. I went, to, I, I went to church last night, and it was a Baptist church. And they told me to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why you got to be baptized in Jesus' name? Oh, we Pentecostal. Oh, because y'all Pentecostal. So, I wasn't contaminated. 
I wasn't polluted with a lot of bad teaching and doctrine. I didn't even know the Bible. So I be sitting in church, right? I'm, I'm very inquisitive. I won't learn. I won't learn this stuff, right? So when I go to the Wednesday church service, they will always come out of the book of Acts. They will always come out the book of Acts. When I went to their service, they will always come out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I said, okay, you Baptist people, this is what I'm, I'm talking to them, God and not, God and not. So you Baptist people, y'all follow John the Baptist. That's where y'all get the Baptist from. You Pentecostal people, y'all roll with the book of Acts because of the day of Pentecost. But the day of Pentecost is just 50 days. 40 days after Jesus rose from the grave, he met him on the Mount of Olivet. 10 days later, they received the Holy Spirit. Pentecost, 50 days. According to the Old Testament, Pentecostal people, according to the Old Testament, 50 days after the children of Israel came out of bondage, Moses go on the mountain, he come back. That's when God officially made Israel his firstborn. Because he could not have made Israel his firstborn as long they, as long as they were in bondage. Explain that, Pentecost. While you're getting together, how let me. Baptist. John the Baptist is the last prophet of the Old Testament. According to the first verse in Malachi 3 and 1, he said, I will send my messenger. Who was the messenger? John the Baptist. John the Baptist would come in the spirit of who? Elijah. So, between Matthew and Malachi, God was silent for 400 years. God didn't say nothing for 400 years. Was nothing written in 400 years. Okay. Now all of a sudden, here come this dude, John the Baptist. But Isaiah, you prophesied about the one that will be in the wilderness. John the Baptist. So Baptist people, can y'all explain that? You see, because John the Baptist is the last prophet to come out of the Old Testament. So now when John the Baptist show up, because of 400 years of silence, now here come these Pharisees and these Sadducees with all of these oral laws. Not nothing written, not nothing written, but what they said out of their mouth and made law. The Pharisees were so sharp at it, they didn't switch the scriptures around. This is why Jesus said, it's not what comes out of the man, but it's what comes out of his mouth that defiles him. It's not what goes in, it's what comes out that defiles him. Because y'all told Jesus that his disciples didn't wash their hands as if that was going to make them dirty. So y'all caught up in all of these traditions and all these rituals. Y'all done switched the scriptures and now y'all coming with this oral stuff. Make it make sense. Baptist. So now here come you Kojic people. Y'all won't be holy than thou. Ooh, okay, slow your road. Stay focused on what happened in the 1900, not what, 1902 or one or something? In California, on Ezusia Street, call Jake. Miss me. Okay. Then you full gospel people, here y'all come. Now y'all won't be Pentecostal in Baptist. For you Full gospel people say the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Full gospel. That's what y'all call it, right? Okay. Pentecostal, y'all ready yet? 
Kojic, y'all ready? Okay, y'all ain't ready? Yeah, well, well, find me some scriptures. Baptist, okay, find me some scriptures. Full gospel. So now here y'all come. Y'all won't give the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Saying, Bishop, you don't even know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But yeah, you started full gospel, right? Okay. Now, then you gonna get these people that was Baptist. They no longer Baptist Missionary Church. Now they Baptist Missionary Full Gospel. And you Negroes messed up. Boy, y'all crazy. Y'all done lost y'all rabbit mind. Okay, cool. All right, cool. I, I work with y'all. I work with y'all. So now, because man seen that y'all was running game, man no won't be Missionary Baptist Full Gospel and all that. Now they just temples. Now they communing. Now they... I'll wait, man. I'll wait. What are we going to be next? <laughs> what are we going to be next? Make up your mind. I'll wait. So now you go to church this week, full gospel. Then next week you're going to go to another church, Baptist. Then you go next week, you're going to go to another church, Pentecostal. Then next week, you're going to go to another church, Kojic. <laughs> and you're wondering why you're so messed up. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know what you're listening to. You don't even know what's going on. They got day doctrine. They got day doctrine. They got day doctrine. They got day doctrine. Bring me one of them. One out of Baptist. One out of Pentecostal. One out of full gospel. One out of coaching. And I'll run this book down the throat. Bring me one. I'll wait. Sit on my stool in the backyard. Mind my bend. I tell you what does say is the Lord. You do what you want with it. I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to make you believe nothing. I'm just giving it to you what he gave to me. I gave to you. Brother told me, right? Talked to Mr. Banks yesterday. Mr. Banks is truck, uh, truck driver. Mr. Banks said, Pastor Mike, you know, I, I won't bless you. I won't do this and that. All the information in the, in the folder? Nowhere in this folder, on none of these pages, you will see Cash App, you will see Zelle, or you will see anything about a donation. Not in this folder. Nah. We ain't gonna play that game, bitch. No. God say, give it? I'm giving it. So now, on the back side, whatever you want to give to the ministry, however you want to donate to the ministry, however you want to bless the ministry, that's between you and him. But as far as this, I ain't running that game. I could easily slip it in there. Boom. Donate to here. Cash app, sell. Then here he come. Oh, man, he running game. He just sent you all this and that. No. Bible said give no place to the devil. Paul said, I became all things that I may win men to Christ. So now, Father Mike, what's your cash at? Father Mike, what's your deal? They, they ask. That's between them and God. I ain't running no gang. Why? Because guess what? I don't have a middle man. I ain't got to pay nobody. <laughs> Sit in my backyard and pay my phone bills and make sure my iPad and all that working. I ain't got to give nothing to nobody. What I look like? I'm going to take something from you because I got to pay him. I'm going to take something from you because I got to pay for him. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Not me. Paul said, I learned to be a base. When I have it, I'm all right. When I don't have it, I'm still all right. Paul said, why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then Paul put him on game. Paul said, and my goal, my goal, my goal shall supply your needs. For chapter Philippians, and my goal shall supply your needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I know, I know what I put in your account. I know what's there because I put it there. Not because I desire to give from you. No, because I want to make sure that you are right. 
Why? Because he understood that he had to suffer many things for Christ's sake and he never deviated from it. I was dead. I was. And one thing for sure, two things for certain. If God ain't give me nothing, he, 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 I'm not out there running around playing football. I'm not on the basketball court. I'm not rapping. I'm not no R&B singer. I'm not no movie actor. Give me this book. He give me this book. And every last one of them, the football player, the basketball player, the rappers, the entertainers, the president, they got to come get a word. They got to come get a word. He gave me this book. Oh, he said, eat it. Eat, eat that book. I ate it. <laughs> According to the 10th chapter of Revelation. But the angel said, no, nah, don't write it down. Don't write it down. Eat it. When you eat it, then it can be trans, then it can be what? Interpreted. And you eat it, it can be interpreted. But when you write it, they're going to try to translate it. No, eat the book. So Pastor Mike, eat the book. So since I done ate the book, so now I spit what's in the book. So in spinning with the book, they're trying to translate it. You can't translate what is spoken. It has to be interpreted. Now, who have the gift to interpret? For Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Therefore, the sheep was able to interpret with, oh, Lord, that Lord have mercy. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. The sheep was able to interpret what the shepherd was saying. Nowhere in the world, drop it in net, right? Watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Dropping the net ministry, right? Dropping the net ministry. Dropping the net ministry. Jesus, tell Peter, push out in the deep, in the daytime. Jesus, tell Peter, push, push out in the deep, in the daytime. Peter, ship, Peter fished at night, close to shore. Peter fished at nighttime, close to shore. It's daytime. Jesus said, push out in the deep, right? Okay. God said, Mike. I don't care what time of day it is. He said, I don't care how far you gotta go. He said, drop the net. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. And when Peter dropped the net and got all them fish, Jesus said, leave that. Come on. Now I'm gonna teach you to be a fisherman of men. You don't see the church? Paul, Jesus was always putting him on game. When Paul started the church of Galatia, he had to leave. He go to Ephesus. He had to leave. He go to Colossians. He had to leave. He go to Thessalonians. He had to leave. He go to... Why? He did what he was supposed to do. Start the church. Peter did what he had to do. He dropped the net. And all the people came to help him. This is why in the 15th chapter of Acts, now you get the first conference. Well, let's discuss this thing together, bro. What, how you see it? How you see it? What you think? What you think? What you believe? It's all Bible, man. It's all Bible. It's all Bible. But, 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 but. They don't know it like that. <laughs> I, well, I don't want to hear that foolishness. I, I don't want, I can't. Hey, man, I ain't about to live in that foolishness. We bigger than that, baby. Paul said when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. My man, I got time to do with them little gang. Like, oh, shun be yun be oh, <laughs> for what? And put that away. Let's proclaim the real word of God in the ending of time. The white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. Let's get into some real stuff. The abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel. Let's get into some real stuff. The seven seals, the seven trumpet judgment, the seven bowl judgment. Let's get into some real stuff. The seven churches, let's get into some real stuff. The abomination, let's get into some real stuff. The battle on Magidian, let's get into some real stuff. The millennium, let's get into some real stuff. Let's get to some real stuff, a little baby. Had a member yesterday, right? God told me to call a member, right? So I called the member, and the member had went out there. He knew he went out there, right? So he talking to somebody that's real educated and went to Bible college the whole nine yards, right? So he he tell them 
about the bride and who the bride really is. So the guy, the guy, that Bible college for seminary foolishness. So at the time, I'm on the phone talking to my people. I said, no, man, 21st chapter of Revelation. He said, what, what verse? I started, started, first, started at the ninth verse and going on down. I'm going to tell you who the bride really is, right? So the dude come back, well, you can't start at the ninth verse. I said, okay, we'll go back and tell him this. Verses three through eight, God is talking. God said, no more tears, no more crying, no more pain, no more sorrows, right? I said, but better yet, tell him about verse one and two. Why? Because verse one and two, John is telling us what he's seen. John is telling us what he's seen, right? I said, okay, now let's run it all the way down. Let's just run the whole 21st chapter. Now, dude say, that's not that. He said something about Peter. I say, no, not in Revelation. That's John talking. And the angel is dealing with John, right? So the dude come back. No, 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 don't try to fix it now. Say, bro, I don't knock, I don't knock Bible college. I don't knock seminary. I will say this, when it come down to this book, God will run it down y'all throat. You don't learn God in no Bible college. You don't learn God in no seminary. You learn God from experiences. You learn God from what you go through. For as David said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? For David said, had I not believed, I would have fainted. Had I fainted? Oh, David, you stood strong. Bible, baby. But yet, they want jibby jibby jam. love it david said it was good that i was afflicted it was good that the house burned down it was good that i got in an accident it was good that i lost this and that that's what david said david said because before i was afflicted i went astray i did everything i wanted to do the way i wanted to do it but the minute that tragedy came the minute that tragedy came, I got my mind right. Because now I see that God has dealt bountifully with me. You better read Psalms and stop with all those faith. And, ha! Tell me where I can't go. How you going to tell me where I can't go? How you going to tell me what I can't do? I live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I know what David was saying when he said he kept his eyes lifted towards the hills for which come in his help. Not Bible college, not seminary, not all these good fake line people. No. Why? Because behind the adversities, behind the troubles, behind the letdowns, behind the disappointment, there was God. There was God. That's why he kept his eyes lifted towards the hill because he knew right behind them hills was God. He said, I know where my help come from. My help come from the Lord. Hey, baby. Hey, 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 hey. That's why he kept his eyes lifted towards the hill. <laughs> we might have got all that trouble. I see it. Boy, I know one thing. God going to show up. God going to show up. But I, I lost this. God going to show up. For as Paul says, he have made a way of an escape. He have made a way of escape through the temptation. But you won't pray it away. No. With, with, with the temptation, no matter what come at you, God right there for you. No matter what come at you, God is right there for you. So if God be for me, if God be for me, who going to be against me? <laughs> Woo! Haters, get on your job. Motivation, baby. Get on your job. I pray for all the haters. I thank God for them. Say, Jesus, you did that too. Came Friday. You was on the cross. They done nailed you. They done beat you. They done spit on you. They done put thorns all in your head. You looked on them and you said, Father, forgive them. <laughs> for they know not what they do. <laughs> I say, God, forgive them. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Well, God ain't called you. No, he didn't call me. 
He said he chose. <laughs> it's a difference. <laughs> he said in, in John 15 and 16, Mike, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I ordained you that you should go forth and that you should bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name. <laughs> Bible, baby. He didn't call you. You're right. He didn't call me. He chose me. He chose me to do just what I'm doing and can't now one of them open their mouth. What did they, they win? Oh, Lord. Ooh. I got to get my Easter haircut. I'm running my mouth with y'all. I'm going to be looking crazy for Easter.